heartbroken that something like this uh, might have happened again. And uh, I don't want to comment on the facts until I know exactly uh, what has happened. Uh, but for now, uh, I would just hope that uh, everybody across the country is keeping uh, the families and the community of Fort Hood in our thoughts and our, in our prayers. All right, folks, uh, welcome to the Steve Molesberg Show. And uh, that, of course, President Obama uh, yesterday uh, talking uh, about the uh, tragedy at Fort Hood. And uh, as promised, uh, we are joined right now by Congressman uh, Pete Olson. Congressman, of course, and former naval aviator. Welcome, Congressman. Thanks, Steve. Thanks for having us this afternoon. Appreciate it. Well, yeah, you know, here we go again. Uh, I, w I was at the Knicks game with my son uh, yesterday, and uh, when I got the CNN alert, I, I couldn't believe it. Half of me wanted to leave and just, you know, go home and watch the coverage. And um, it, j as the count mounted and the comments, you know, came pouring in, I just I couldn't believe here we go again. Um, when you heard about this, what was your reaction? Well, Steve, I have a heavy heart this morning, this afternoon, um, and I, I've got a deep anger as well. A heavy heart because, as you mentioned, I served the Navy. I know that some fellow soldier killed his buddies, killed his comrades. Three of them died just doing their job, working every day like they've done. And deep anger because, I mean, for example, the, the liberal media and the liberals in America are trying to use this for political advantage. I posted a Twitter last night, just like you at the game. This was so overcome with emotion. I posted a tweet just saying the last word was a powerful word, pray. I just said pray. This person wrote, cold, heartless liberal wrote, we don't need prayers. We need cowardly congressmen to stand up to the gun industry, the NRA, and pass sensible laws. Outrageous. Outrageous. So I'm angry about that. But again, overall, my heart hurts because these Americans did nothing wrong. One of their own shot them dead at Fort Hood yesterday. You know, uh, before we get to, to the, uh, the issue of guns uh, uh, on a military basis, concealed guns, uh, um, it turns out that uh, there was no, uh, you know, no evidence. Uh, he, he told people that he had a, a brain injury. Uh, there was no evidence of that. There was no uh, uh, direct combat that he was involved in. There were no wounds that he ever suffered. Uh, he was fully examined last uh, month uh, by a psychiatrist. He was not found to be a threat to, uh, to have any threats of violence uh, uh, in him or, or on his person, if you will. Um, so this came, came out of the blue. Um, you know, it, it makes you wonder if there was some kind of motive there that we don't know about yet. Yes, we're trying to figure out what happened there, Steve. I've heard so many conflicting reports. I've heard, well, you said this man went overseas for three months. I've heard he also went overseas twice, and the guard wasn't tracked by the active widow there with three months in the active army. So there's all sorts of misinformation out there. Let's just take a deep breath, get the facts. Most of all, pray, pray, pray. Three young Americans lost their lives yeah. in their fellow soldiers' hands, and almost 20 were wounded. These yeah, and, people need our help right now. And, and, of course, it's the wounded. You know, we, we, we've had on this show in the past, we're going to have one of the heroes of the first Fort Dick shooting in a little while, uh, the horror stories that they're going through because that event, which was an act of jihad, obviously, was classified as an act of workplace violence, and so they're not even getting the help and the benefits and the monies that they would receive if it was properly classified by this administration. Uh, but that, you know, they're, they're in dire straits uh, financially. Yeah, absolutely. I spon co sponsored the bill here in the House to get those people what they deserve. That was an act of terrorism, it was not workplace violence. Just outrageous that President Obama would say workplace violence. He went down there to Fort Hood. He knew he saw what happened. And to say that somehow it wasn't, the guy said, Allah Akbar, we started killing people. That is terrorism, pure and simple. Terrorism, terrorism, terrorism. Those people should be treated as victims of terrorism. Absolutely. And what struck me here was early on, they made it a point to say in this in this shooting, uh, no signs of terrorism. We don't believe it's terrorism. Right? I mean, they, right out of the bat, when you know, I think you and I would agree, we, we don't really know a whole lot right now. Exactly. I mean, that's what this administration makes me so angry that they would say that and start trying to before they got the facts. And again, this one person would say that we don't need prayers. We need cowardly congressmen to stand up to the gun industry. Just That's awful. All right. Well, well, let me let me let me talk about what uh, what you as a congressman uh, have done. And let me play a soundbite first. Um, and and this is uh, the uh, lieutenant uh, lieutenant general at the uh, base yesterday speaking about uh, the question was asked at the press conference about uh, carrying guns uh, on base. Here's what he said. Discussion about uh, soldiers being allowed to carry a concealed weapon for self-defense. What are your thoughts on soldiers carrying concealed weapons on base? Uh, you're not allowed to carry concealed weapons think on base. That um, no, I don't think soldiers should have concealed weapons on base. We have law enforcement agents 
Uh, we're trained professionals, and I, and I don't endorse carrying concealed weapons on base. All right, that's Lieutenant General Mark Miley. Um, you were a co-sponsor of, uh, of a bill, uh, the uh, H.R. 3199 Safe Military Bases Act, and I, I assume that would have allowed uh, people to carry concealed weapons on military bases, which might have certainly helped with the Fort Hood shooting and might have helped some of the co prevent some of the carnage and bloodshed here. Yes, yeah, Steve Mead, I respect Lieutenant General because he served our country admirably for about 35 years or so, but I disagree with him. I mean, as we've seen, somebody having some weapon, concealed weapon, just the fact that those shooters know that people may have weapons is a terror. Who knows? Maybe the first, maybe Major Hassan had not, had not gone crazy a couple years ago. Maybe tonight, last night, would have happened. Who knows? But again, that's why I'm a proud co-sponsor, Steve Stockton's bill, H.R. 1319, to make sure that our troops, we trust them with weapons in combat, why don't we trust the weapons at home? Well, that, you know, the, the argument from the, the, the left in the media that you uh, so uh, aptly uh, alluded to earlier in the interview, uh, their argument is, you know, uh, if you let people carry guns, you know, uh, uh, civilians, oh, they'll, they'll shoot each other over parking spots, they'll shoot each other in bars, and of course, most of the country has concealed weapon carry, and that does not happen anywhere. Uh, they just, you know, these are the Northeast senators usually who make that argument and try to instill fear into people. But you're right. I mean, one would think that of all people who you would trust and, and, and enable to carry concealed weapons, especially with the threats these soldiers face today, on base, unfortunately, uh, from some who would want to do them harm in, in their own uniform, uh, it, it's a no-brainer. Hello, liberals, come to planet Earth, get with us here. I mean, that's just crazy, Steve, just crazy. Again, who knows what would have happened if people on base had weapons right there. They might return fire. The one person that had a weapon, the policewoman, she did her job and took that guy down or had him lined up to take down. He killed himself. So the one person with a weapon stopped this thing. Guess what? Somebody right there has a weapon. It could have stopped with just him ki being killed instead of three other people, innocent people, and 20 or more people that wounded just outrageous. If they won't respect our, our troops' personal responsibilities, their training, and let them carry weapons. We train them to kill in combat. We train them to be safe with those weapons. Let them carry those weapons. Yeah, C Congressman, is it, is it just political correctness, total co political correctness, do you believe? Oh, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. That's why the general, I think, is sort of, I felt that his, uh, his lack of emotion, commitment, his comments, just indicate that he's just doing it because he's towing the party line. He knows President Obama, his commander in chief, wants weapons off the base. And again, like I said, a liberal just said, you know, this is all about gun control. I got a tweet about gun control. Yeah, yeah. Three Americans were killed by their by their colleagues. Twenty more were wounded by their colleagues. It happened a couple years ago. It's the same base. This has to stop. We take a big step by passing HR 1319 and making sure our troops can carry weapons on base. Well, this uh, will this be brought up uh, by uh, John Boehner and uh, for a vote? We'll see. I mean, you know, this, we're still dealing with the shooting right now. Again, my main focus right now is making sure those families know how much we love them, much we appreciate what they've done for us, both the deceased and the wounded. We've got to stand by them right now and wait for the facts to come out. But once they come out, again, I can't see a reason why we should let our people carry weapons, concealed weapons. We let them take them into combat. They're safe. They're professionals. They know what to do with them. Let them take them home. C Congressman, anything we could do or I could do, you have this microphone. Uh, you let us know, sir, and, and thank you for, for serving. And uh, the families and the, uh, and, and the families of the victims and the victims themselves are lucky to have you on their side and as, as a voice for them. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, Steve. One request, get on my Twitter account and respond to that woman who gave that outrageous comments about this. What's your Please. handle? What's your handle? Uh, is my handle. Olson, Olson Press, Press Shop. Shop. It'll okay. come up pretty quickly about my little thing, but closing, just say the word, just pray, and then this purse went off that I wanted prayers as opposed to gun control. Absolutely. Absolutely. So first up a message and get the heck out of America. Okay. God bless you, uh, uh, Congressman. Thank you. Pete Olson from the great state of Texas, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, just, uh, <laughs> it should be shocking, but it's uh, not, unfortunately. When we come back, the hero, one of the heroes of the first Fort Hood shooting will join us. Sergeant Howard E. Ray on the Steve Malzberg Show, Newsmax Television. We don't just talk about the news. We talk to those making news. This is the Steve Malzberg Show.